And we are very happy to have with us here today the uh, uh, former commissioner under Bloomberg, was it Bloomberg? And uh, 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 Department of Records. And Brian has a long history of some fabulous things that he has done, been to, seen, famous people. He has helped dig up their roots and so on. And fabulous. <laughs> so please, uh, warm welcome for Brian from the Bronx. Take it over, Brian. You want to have this microphone or? Let's see if we can all hear you. It's a small right. room. I think it'll be all right. All right. Well, anyway, I just want to say thank you for inviting me. Gene and Gene and I have been friends for uh, years. Uh, met through Swedish goings on. But see, my story is I didn't know any of this stuff. That's why Voss is so important. You guys are keeping it going, and that's critical. Randy will certainly grow up knowing this. He can't help it. But I didn't. <laughs> I was born in the Bronx to an Irish Swedish family who wanted nothing to do with the old country. Yeah, they were Irish, yeah, they were Swedes, but so what does it matter to you? This is America, you learn English, mm -hmm. you go to school. Now, I didn't get that, my parents got that. So by the time they got to me, who cares? That's the old country, we don't think, do things like that anymore. Why are you so interested in this? Well, here's why. I'm in first grade, <clears throat> St. Nicholas of Tallentine High School, uh, Grammar School, in the Bronx, where I'm from. I have a six foot tall, beautiful nun teaching first grade. And I'm only about this tall, you know. And she's going around asking all the children in the class what their names are, do they know their ethnic background. Oh, that's an Italian one. <coughs> so by the time they get to Anderson, of course, I'm a smart guy. You know, I, Brian, I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm Irish. And the nun scowls at me. She goes, well, Anderson's not an Irish name that I know of. Because I have Andersons in my family, and they're Scottish. Well now, I don't, know, I don't know what to say. The, the nun just told me I'm not Irish, so I have to march home now and confront my father. <laughs> my father's the Anderson. My mom's side is O'Brien, so that's where the Brian comes from. Which is funny. It's a nice play up, by the way. But I have to confront my father when he gets home from work. I said, Dad, Sister Laureen says Anderson's not an Irish name. What's with that? Now, I was like seven years old. And he goes, well, it's not. OK, now I'm stunned. What is it? He goes, well, your grandfather, my father, your grandfather, was born in Copenhagen, Denmark. Now that was exotic. <laughs> For me, a different place. I've never heard of this place. Well, I did. I actually knew here. Hans Christian Andersen, the song, the movie. That's it. We're related to Hans Christian Andersen. Of course. I knew that. We're good at storytelling. You know, I love that movie. We must be. That, that makes sense. They called you Dumbledore. So here I thought. <laughs> that's right. So here I thought now that I'm. Danish American. No, no, other than that my father's father, who was dead by this time, I didn't know him, was born in Copenhagen. That's it. That's all we knew. Go forward. So years later, as I'm starting to put my family heritage together, because the roots craze hit and the, the show on television craze. So I start asking more deeper questions. How do you how do you start looking into this? Because I'm interested in that branch of my family. All I know is what my father told me. And then his grandfather, his father, was born in Copenhagen, Denmark, 1886. How do I find out more information? So that's what launched me into this. Of course, it took a path I didn't expect. But as I'm researching this, I find some documentation that not only did I miss knowing my grandfather by four years, he died four years before I was born. His mother, my great-grandmother, died three years before that. So I missed meeting my great-grandmother by seven years. And it was her death certificate that opened up the whole world to me. And suddenly I'm looking at names I had no clue who they were. Her parents were Nils Christensen, Elmer Rosenquist from Sweden. What's going on here? It's getting complicated. <laughs> but it happened the right way. Again, I'm using documentation that I, for the people that I know who it is, and I work backwards from there. And it led me back to a great adventure and my pride in my Swedish background. So much so that I put the second desk back into Anderson. That's what I use for that. So that's, that's, that's the dramatic thing I took, just to show that this Anderson is a Swedish name. Not Danish, not Scottish, but distinctively Swedish. So as I'm doing this research, I want to see where the, the, my family settled in the Bronx. I go to the Bronx County Historical Society. And the historian, the official historian of the Bronx, Lloyd Altair, who's written a number of books on the Bronx, if you're interested, tells me, oh, we just came across something new, some genealogist in British Isles did some research. He's a genealogist, and now they think that Jonas Brunk 
might be Swedish. Now, Jonas Brock, who the heck is this guy and why do we care? Well, I don't care. I grew up in the Bronx. Now, just for you, I was going to use this line, but I realized I can't. You can't. The Bronx is the mainland section of, of New York City. Everybody else is from an island. Brooklyn, Queens, Long Island, Staten Island, Manhattan. You can't get to the mainland without passing through the Bronx. But then I realized I'm talking a bunch of Vikings here. We'll take the boat. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't get to the Bronx without going through the Bronx. You can't get to the mainland. So Jonas Bronx was this guy who settled when the Dutch still ran New Amsterdam, he decided, well, I'm going to settle up on the mainland there. And I said, well, good luck with that, you know? Because everyone else has done that. It's been massacred, and uh, good luck. So anyway, he settled there. He died a few years later. But his name stayed with the property for some strange reason. It always falls to the guy that makes the map. And it was known as Bronx Land. And that was Bronx River. So Bronx, the name Bronx stuck, except in a, in a different form. The X at the end. And that was kind of the possessive case in his name, Bronx River. So the Bronx is really named for the river, not for him specifically. But that's all right. I grew up loving history, loving local history. And I would hear these stories about the Bronx and this guy, Jonas Bronx. All right. And now to hear that he may be Swedish at the same time that I'm discovering my roots, now you can't stop me. Now I'm on to something. So this is the adventure. This is the story. Why is it called the Bronx? I gave you half the story. The man that settled there was named Jonas Bronk. We weren't sure about his ancestry. His property was known as Bronx Land by the few people that bothered to go there. That story you keep hearing about, oh, we're going to go up to see the Bronx. And the folks said, no, no one was doing that. It was dangerous at the time. It was a three-day journey, even from lower Manhattan. That wasn't happening. That was not why it was called the Bronx. His name stuck. The river became known as the Bronx River, like the Atlantic Ocean. The Bronx. It's the borough of the Bronx. That's why the thug is there. And of course, we're the home in New York State. That's why I throw that in there. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, but he's a, he's a, he's, here's a single person in history for whom this big part of New York City is named. I'm intrigued. I'm going to find out, given what time I can, using you know what resources I can manage. And hopefully, this will work. Please, please. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> Company, which owned New York City or Manhattan Island. And this supposedly comes from Bronx coat of arms, this rising sun above the water with the Latin name shading models of conclusions don't yield to the evil. That was supposedly Bronx coat of arms that survives to this day in the Bronx official flag. But it also, for some curious reason, that's New York State's flag and crest. <coughs> Look at that. It was right smack in the middle, something very similar. So we think that Bronx coat of arms even manifests itself in today's New York State crest as well. Just one of those little things. His name carries on in a few places. A public school in the South Bronx, probably one of the worst schools in the Bronx in the city, unfortunately. But his name persists in that school. And this concrete-looking thing called Jones Bronx Apartments. This is pictures of this thing. So his name, the man, Jonas Brock, his name survived in a couple of places. But who the heck was he? He persisted in artwork. Here's the treaty that was signed by the Indians because there was a lot of massacres between New Netherlands and, and the tribal areas, the tribal areas. A great work on New York City history, one you didn't learn in school. It's called The Island at the Center of the World. It tells you distinctly why Manhattan and New York City is just so different from the rest of the United States. It was primarily due to the Dutch influence. A great book, and it'll give you a very distinct notion of what was going on in those days. A lot of Indian wars, a lot of messages back and forth, by the way. And a peace treaty was signed in the Bronx House, and that's a famous painting. The Bronx County Courthouse, here's the mural, and that's how you get Jones Brock arriving. Right? Again, I don't know how much history this was based on, but nonetheless, that's what we'd have to know about the man. And here's the thing that really throws us off. I had a friend come back and say, did you know in the Faroe Islands is a, is a Jonas Bronk street in the Faroe Islands? Faroe Islands? Why in the Faroe Islands? We get it. But there's the street sign. for Jonas Bronx cover. Okay. I don't know where we're going to go with this, but okay. So 
So as I said, I was doing my own genealogy, and the Brunswick County historian told me, yeah, there's some guy from the British Isles, he's a genealogist, and he's come to the conclusion that Brunswick was Swedish. Well, how is that? Well, here's the guy's name and number, maybe we should contact him, and I did. So Barney Young wrote this pamphlet called The Founder of the Bronx. And he's from the Isle of Man. I and mean, this is right between Britain and Ireland, right in the middle of the sea. The Isle of Man wrote this thing. I don't know what his interest was or why, but here he is. And I contacted him. I'm sorry, this is the back of the photograph. This is some of the stuff that I got as a result of talking to him. These are actual photographs from Amsterdam. Jonas Brunt made his way to the New World via Holland. It was the most dominant country in Europe at the time. It was settling in the, in the, in the New World. This is the place to be. He got on a ship there. We know that. That's part of history. But here's the documents. This is one of them. Here he says, is Jonas Brunt. All right, that's him. And we know it's the guy. So we're on, we're on the track. This is the guy that settled the Bronx. We know that. We know that. That's what this document is about. He's securing the voyage. He's paying money. He's not getting on that boat. I'm sailing over there. And up at the top of that document, very clearly, there's Jonas Bronk from Smolok in, and that looks suspiciously like Sweden. Doesn't look like Denmark, doesn't look like Germany, doesn't look like Norway. That looks like it says Sweden. But what the heck is Smolok in Sweden? Just didn't have a spell. Well, they were also Dutch hearing. Yeah. Where are you from again? Oh. Black, 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 black. Hmm. So Barney Young concluded, from talking to people, that Smolok was most probably Smolok. Sounds like it. It's probably the way they wrote it. They wrote it down. Well, let's see. So he was just took a step in time. Here's another document that completely, completely changed things around. Because for years and years and years, the Danes always claimed Jones Park. And that was the Faroe Island connection. I'll explain in a minute. But here again, here's our Jones Frank. But he signs his name differently this time. Includes the patronym, and you're all familiar with that. Your father's name, plus son or daughter at the end of it. That's the old bachelor. Yes, Randy, that's exactly right. He signed his name Jonas, Jonas Brock, which tells you his father's name was Jonas. There it is. Very plain. This is the guy that settled. This is the man. Here's how he signed his name. That's all the proof I need. That's all the proof I need to prove that he was a Swede. And not Danish. And I, and I had no agenda. I didn't care one way or the other. I'm a historian. I'll take the facts the way they come. Just show me the paperwork. Show me the documentation on which you base this. And here's on which we base this. Enough said. Here's the Danish claim. The Danes claim, oh look, there's a guy named Jonas going to school at the University of Copenhagen at about the right time, 1619. This could be the guy that went to Holland and then went to the World because he's going to the University of Copenhagen. His name is Jonas, and his father's name is Brock. Now, his father was a, a Danish minister, a Danish Lutheran minister in the Faroe Islands. That's why that sign is there. The Danish minister in the Faroe Islands' name was Morton Jesperson Brock. Therefore, the Brock going to the University of Copenhagen, that the claim was the man that settled the Bronx, should have been named Jonas Mortensen Brock. That would have been his name. That's why we would have signed his name. Our Jonas Brock did not. That's the way he signed his name. It's not Mortensen. Danish case, sorry. Now, Jonas Brock was a learned man. He had many, many books in his library. In the New World, he took these things with him. And for the most part, they were a lot of things, very religious tracts, but also most of the stuff was in Danish. Therefore, that led some credence to the, the point that he could have been Danish. Again, this disproves the fact that he was. Would he have learned Danish? Possibly. He lived in a small island. He was right bordering. Skåne, which was Danish at one time. The Danes were the dominant of the Scandinavian groups at the time. He would have known this. So it's not unusual that he would have had books in his library in Danish. But it's not proof of his own ethnicity. So I took all this information and I assembled it. And I had the good fortune, and Jeannie will know, maybe some of you knew her as well. I met I met Alvin Carlson and her husband, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. at a book fair on Fifth Avenue. This is when I had book fairs on Fifth Avenue. And I was walking down I'm soon to be wife, and off to the side is a table with a Swedish flag and an American flag, and right next to it is an Irish flag and an American flag. Now, they're calling me, so I pulled over to get their books, and Al Blaine, of course, just seizes onto you, and she 
learned your Swedish, you're hers. <laughs> so I spoke to uh, Alvin extensively for a long time. She said, look, when you get all this stuff assembled, why don't you write an article and we'll publish it in the future? And I, I wasn't that much into my Swedish stuff yet, but she made it happen. So I have, I have a lot of people to thank in my, in my trek to discover my Swedish ancestry. So I wrote this article for her back in, yes, yes, it does say 1982. That's a long time ago. That's 30, what? Wow. 30, 30 something, whatever. I don't think <laughs> So 30 some odd years ago, I wrote this article for Moon Sharing. And that was, that's really what did it. That set me on the path. And I picked it up, put it down, picked it up, put it down. But that's what started people up, realizing that it's this major part of New York City. It's not, never mind being named for Scandinavian. It's named for a Swede. They're inconclusive. The Danish claim, that's all well and good, but we have proof now that he's conclusively Swedish. I started promoting this. I, I started writing to people like the American ambassador in Stockholm. Hey, just Mr. Forsberg, just for your information, you, know, you may find this interesting. So he wrote back to me saying that it was funny to get the letter, it was distributed among my staff. I took it a step further. In 1989, I did some math, and I realized, wait a second, that's, this is going to be the well, this is going to be the 350th anniversary of Brahms' arrival. So I spoke to the Brahms borough president at the time. He says, yeah, let's form a little committee, maybe do something for the anniversary. Small scale, nothing big, no great much of that. Oh, I see that. Everybody went like this. And we got a commemorative uh, edition published with the, 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 post, the postal authorities. It was a stamp for that day, so that year, with that picture we saw earlier. Street being signed with the Indians with Jonas Brown's house. We had a time capsule placed right outside. My son was born in 1989, so his photograph, I granted him, went right into the time capsule and it's buried right outside the Bronx County Courthouse. Remember Lassa Holmquist? Remember him? He died a few years ago. He was a famous author, very famous television personality. He got a kick out of this because I have to hear more about the story. Because, by the way, could you dress up like him? Now, wait a minute. You know, it, you know, I'm a historian, you know, I, I'm black history. I don't know if I can do this. I do. So, on the rooftop of Las Holker's house, I dressed up as Jones. Right, you hold the flag, well, that's perfect. Click with it. So I'm in this book that Las Holker's published. Bronk is getting some serious mileage here. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm starting to meet people in the Swedish American world that are, are pretty, you know, pretty important people and fun people to hang out with, like Jeans. <laughs> It went so far as we had the 350th anniversary of the of the Bronx. I even got the Consul General to be involved. Arne, Arne, um, Turan. Turan, yes. Nice. I was very happy there. Oh, that's right. <laughs> we did a good time. And he was very pleased. We, we, we took it up. We took it up to another level. Now we're dealing with the Swedish diplomats here in the city. And they like this, you know? So you're talking a large part of New York City is named for Sweden. Yes. Yes. How'd that get in there? <laughs> So years go by, and I do my little publicity here and there. I'm still talking about, still talking about, still talking about, still talking about. I talk about it so much, you know, you look at your watch, what time is it? What year is it? Wow, it was a fast 25 years. Suddenly now we're coming up on the Bronx 375th anniversary. Now that's not the big, like 350, 400, but it's a big enough significant anniversary, especially because most of the area around New York City can't count that many years. Parts of Westchester maybe. So it's a far Long Island, maybe, but pockets, pockets of places. Certainly nowhere else in New York City that you claim 375 years. So I started promoting this idea. This is not a real idea, by the way. That was the idea. And here's what happened. The borough president thought it was an okay idea, but it was more important that the borough of the Bronx was coming up on its 100th anniversary as a county. Bronx County was established in 1914. It's the youngest county in New York State. Despite having 375 years of history, we're the youngest county in New York State. Go figure. And it's going to be 100 years old. So he thought Bronx 100 was a better theme. Well, I have my own things to do. Who's, who's with me? I get phone calls from Sweden suddenly. There's a group over in Sweden that have been reading about this. But they know about this. And I was very flattered. And we'd like to do something over here. Can you come over and advise us? <laughs> what? I, 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 well, I can't. No, 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 we'll pay for everything. Uh, well, when, you know. So, this businessman, Roy Gustafsson, on the left, 
who lives in Sèvres, which is the town which is where Comstad, the Bronx, was from, as you can tell. He lives in this town, and he wants the town to do something for the 375th anniversary. Would you come over and help us with this? Certainly. So I go over, I meet the boy, of course we have to get the Bronx flag with us. And here we are standing in front of the church, and I'm sure many of you have been to Sweden this. Americans are blown away by this kind of history. Because here I am talking about 375 years. I think it's a big deal. And for Americans, it is. In Sweden, that's nothing. So here we are standing in front of the church <laughs> that we can best determine that Jonas Bronk was baptized in. We're almost positive this is it. Are there records? No. But everything has led back to this town in Sweden that Bronk himself said he was from. Homestad and Small. Here's the church. Bronk was baptized here promptly, the year he was born, 1600, was when he was baptized here. The church was already 500 years old when he was baptized here. So this church dates from the year 1100, <laughs> certainly older than anything I've ever been here, and we're hoping the Bronx flag in front of the church. That was, that was a big milestone, just having somebody on the other side of the ocean acknowledge this. Roy was so much behind this. He's a businessman, owns some property in town, and Sevra, as I say, is where Homestad is part of this municipality. He named his building the, J the Jonas Bronx Center. I think it's getting better, people. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I think Jonas Bronx was probably twirling in his grave, wherever that may be, because here back in the town he was from, something was being named for him. And people were putting things together, and I was helping. It kind of, it kind of outgrew me. There's Kumstad. This is the town that Bronk was actually from, where he said he was from. And it's, a, it's kind of a fun place, but a lot of the locals, you know, I, I guess maybe it's a, it's a new Swedish thing. That's nice, but we don't want to make a big deal about it. I said, whatever, here it is. It's your history. If you want to, you can make a big deal of it. And I will certainly publicize it to the rest of the world. We met the town council on the, on the Central City Hall in Sevra again. Had the Bronx flag. And this is the mayor right here, Stefan Gustafsson, and a whole gang of thieves, as we call them here in the area. Mm. This is a side view of the same church, Nora Luna. Again, dates to the year 1100. Staggering. The graves, however, don't date that back that far, as you know, they don't keep graves around that far in the Scandinavian Europe. I was a local hero, suddenly. I go to the <laughs>
a ceremony right in the middle of town, of course, just like yesterday, we did something locally in the Bronx. It rained. It hadn't rained for three weeks. It rained, the, <laughs> it rained the day we did something with Joe's front. But it didn't deter the Swedes. They remember my brother, the Fockers, they were fine. And that's maybe about, that's not even a quarter of the crowd that was here. And we unveiled a monument, again, paid for by Roy Gustafson, who's amazing with that, commemorating the 375th anniversary of the Bronx with Joe's Bronx coat of arms. Again, brought New York and Sweden together in a way that's never been done before, that I know of. So it was remarkable. And again, it all just started because a nun said, Anderson's not a Thank you, Sister Laureen. Okay. The other more, more rewarding part of that was we found actual Bronx descendants. Now, here's the thing. Jonas Bronx died childless. He, he arrived here in 1639, died in 1643 at the age of 40. No children that we know of. There was an inventory done at his estate. And they counted everything he had. There are no children mentioned. There are no descendants of Jonas Brock. But at the same time, there was a fellow that came along with him named Peter Brock. For years, we thought it might have been a son of Jonas, but it wasn't. They were too close to age. Maybe a brother, maybe a cousin. And those documents for Peter also exist in Holland, where you know, he made his own way in the New World. So Peter Brock came to well, and settled in a different part of New York, primarily upstate New Albany. Everyone that's named Bronx in the United States is descended from Peter, not Jones, which was sad news for them, but it's the same family. And we found them, we tracked some of them down. This man's name is Jonas Bronx. He's from upstate New York, apparently lives in California, but he made the trip over there with his wife and two very small children, uh, much to his credit. I mean, this was really high on their agenda. And this is the Reverend Bronk and his brother, Charlie Bronk. Uh, Reverend Bronk lives in Massachusetts. Charlie lives down in South Carolina. They're both, both in the, the Northeast, New York area. Um, and they were thrilled by this. And so was I to have real Bronk family members here at this spot at this exact time. So this is big news like, all over the place, the international press. It made the New York Times, by the way. That's big. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I would, have, I would have brought the copy of the article with me today, and I forgot. So what I'll do is I'll email to Jeannie and you can see how it was covered in the New York Times. And you know what? You've got an artist that lives across the street from the church, and he seized on the themes, and he's doing a lot of Jonas Bronx themed artwork. And I have a friend that lives locally with me in, in the Bronx. I never knew him. He lived down the street from me. And he had started the Jonas Bronx Beer Company. Now we're talking. <laughs> and he's going to be big one day. He's going to be a Brooklyn brewery. He's got all sorts of small brews out there. But he's going to be doing it big time. And he's he loves history, so it's going to be based solidly on Jones Bronx and the history of Bronx. But he's, he traveled with me this week, so those two weeks that we were there. And it was an amazing time. We had a lot of fun. That concludes everything. That's my business card that the Bronx Center made up for me. I've got a few with me to give you, so you have my contact information. But I think that's, that is it. All right. Venture coincided with this guy for whom the Bronx is named. It was interesting. I just found it. Now, I guess you got to be a certain personality type to talk to people and do this kind of thing. I guess I was the right guy for it. But I, I was blessed. I was blessed with a lot of friends, a lot of receptive people. I stayed with it. I met Consul General one evening for a very, very high school thing. And he was behind a curtain. I don't know, Ola Vesper? Ola was behind a curtain, you know, at a, at a separate event. And he goes, <laughs> and I'm just going to drink my hand up to So I go behind the curtain roof, and there's the king of Sweden standing. Oh <laughs> my god! I was just telling the king about you and your thing. Oh. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> so perhaps you can tell him, you know, I said, is this English pretty good? Yes, English is fine. And of course, I didn't get a smile on me. Oh, the optional. So much so that I met the king again a few years later in Central Park. He was here for, I think, the Swedish cottage. And I was a commissioner, and the parks commissioner said, brought me up and says, your, your highness, I understand you know Brian Anderson. And he did. He goes, oh, yes. I said, well, I'm the one that did the Bronx. Yes, I know. Of course. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so you can't get better than that. I'm just a kid from the Bronx. This is a small town in the USA, as far as I'm concerned. This is the king's suite. <laughs> so I'm sure my great-grandmother and all her relatives are all probably spinning around. But he's put it on the map. Now, here's another reason that the Swedes ought to be proud of the Bronx connection. Every Swede alive today 
knows where they were in June of 1959. You know what happened in June of 1959? <laughs> you know what happened in June of 1959? Ingo, you want something. Ingo! Ingo Johansson knocked out Floyd Patterson. Where? In Yankee Stadium. Woo! <laughs> Yankee Stadium. All Swedes' eyes were focused on the Bronx in that year. There's another reason they should be proud of it. They should all be wearing Yankee hats. They were. A lot of kids in Sweden wearing baseball hats with the Yankee symbol on it. Now they know there's a real connection. So look, we got to play it up. we got to play it up. So thanks for your attention. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you.